Hello, and welcome back to the Dealing with Diabetes series. Today we're diving into part two of the low-carbohydrate, high-protein diet for diabetics. And people often ask me, okay, so I know I'm not supposed to eat carbohydrates, but what do I eat if I can't have pasta or rice? Well, today we're talking substitutions. I'm Coach Jessica. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, before we continue, I would ask you to go back and review the vocabulary of nutrition as well as the other dealing with diabetes videos before we continue. Keep in mind, I'm not going to spend any time going back and redefining terms I've already discussed or things I've already defined in previous videos. So to have a full view of everything we're discussing and to really understand it, it's important to go back and watch all of these videos. Each one builds on the last. So please go check that out. And of course, the disclaimer. If you are a person with diabetes and this sounds good to you and you wanna try this way of eating, please, please, please contact me before making any changes to your diet. I've been through this. I know all of the different things you need to take into consideration, and I can help you make this transition a lot easier and a lot safer than if you try to go it alone. So you've decided to try the low-carbohydrate, high-protein way of eating, and after watching the last video, you started with a healthy serving of protein like we discussed. But then what? Before low-carbohydrate, high-protein, you pretty probably would have added a carbohydrate source, something like pasta or rice or potatoes. But now those things are a no-no. And that is because pasta, rice, and potatoes are extremely high in fast-acting carbohydrates. And fast-acting carbohydrates cause major blood sugar spikes. And that's what, of course, we're trying to prevent. But the good news is there are some substitutions. Now keep in mind, these are not going to be exactly the same things as you used to eat. Nothing will ever completely replace a giant bowl of pasta. But keep in mind why you are making this choice. Normalizing and stabilizing blood sugars is crucial for keeping your body from going under the stress that causes the complications that impact your quality of life. So you're gonna choose, make some new choices and maybe you'll even find a new favorite. I did. Now the first thing we're talking about today is shirataki noodles. These are very interesting because they are made from glucomannan, and that is a big word that basically means it's a flower made from the corm or the root of the konjac plant. And konjac is a primary is primarily grown in Japan and it has been widely studied. It is known to have numerous health benefits. Kind of an ugly looking plant but they turn it into these noodle kind of things. And look at how amazing that nutrition content is in there. In a serving of it is only five calories and three grams of carbohydrate, two of which is from fiber. Fiber is the key to the konjac plant and, and basically is the reason for a lot of the benefits. Now it does increase your satiety because it's all soluble fiber. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means here in a couple minutes. But it increases your satiety. It will help with blood sugar control. And it can uh, improve your uh, cholesterol levels because of that soluble fiber. And that soluble, soluble fiber will also help you reduce constipation. It can help improve your skin's health. And some research is showing that it might even support wound healing. Now, there are some considerations with the konjac root. Man, that is an ugly plant, isn't it? But the thing is, if you ingest large amounts of konjac, it will affect your blood sugar. So make sure you're very careful about monitoring your blood sugar, and, and you might even need to change up some of your medications if you're eating large amounts of konjac. Now, you can buy it in forms other than the noodles, like just plain konjac fiber, but it's very, you gotta be a little bit careful with konjac fiber because, because it is that soluble fiber, it basically absorbs water and swells up, which that's part of what, what makes you feel full, so that helps with the satiety piece. But the problem is if you're eating a large amount of konjac fiber, you're also going to need to greatly increase your, your water consumption. 
so you don't choke because it can swell up and it can cause a choking hazard. So just an important consideration to keep in mind about konjac. Now moving on to hearts of palm. Now hearts of palm, literally it just means the inner core of several different varieties of palm trees. That's what it kind of looks like when it's been uh, stripped down and, and cut up like that. Now the nice thing about, con about uh, hearts of palm is that it is low in calories and carbohydrates. It is very high in protein for a plant source, also high in fiber, and half the carbohydrates in the serving of hearts of palm is from fiber. And that has, and the nice thing is that really makes it very low glycemic, meaning it's, it has a very low impact on your blood sugar. It is super high in vitamins and minerals, including an almost an entire day's worth of manganese. Now, manganese is a, uh, sorry, it is a nutrient that's vital for blood sugar control. And that means it's very helpful for people with diabetes. It also is good for bone health, and it also has iron, which is necessary for a whole host of bodily functions, including muscle metabolism, physical growth, and neurological development. Palmine, uh, pal uh, Hearts of Palm comes in a couple different, these, this is just one brand. This is the brand that tends to be my favorite, the Palmini brand. They have it, you can get it in bags or you can get it in cans. And again, look at that low calorie and carbohydrate content. Man, that's good stuff. Now moving on to zoodles. Zoodles are basically just spiralized zucchini. And zucchini is from the squash family, and it's another nutritional powerhouse packed with vitamins A, B, C, and K, as well as the minerals manganese, potassium, copper, and phosphorus. Now, vegetables from the squash family are very high in antioxidants lutein, zeaxanthin, and beta-carotene. Now, antioxidants are the compounds that are found in plant foods that help fight free radicals. And free radicals are those pesky things that damage our cells and also cause cancer and aging. So it's very, very important to eat a lot of antioxidants. Spaghetti squash, this is my favorite of the um, of the pro or the pasta substitutes. It's low in calories, it's high in fiber, it's very high in vitamin C, B, A, and all those antioxidants we talked about in the previous slides. Now, this is what it looks like when you've cooked it. You basically cook it and then you shred it and it kind of shreds into noodle-like things. Now, the thing with uh, spaghetti squash is, is it's slightly higher in carbohydrates than some of the other options, but because of that high fiber content, it can be worked into a healthy, low-carb way of eating. Now, moving on to substitutes for rice. Cauliflower rice. This is one of my favorites because it's very... Uh, very cool. It's a cruciferous vegetable, which is very low in calories and very high in vitamins, fiber, and water. And it has a very mild taste that easily takes on the flavors and tastes of sauces. This makes a fantastic fried rice. You make it with cauliflower rice and some chicken or pork and all the different vegetables. Ah, oh, so good and very easy. Makes a nice low-carb dinner. Another substitute for rice, and this is actually my favorite one. I know I've said that about a lot of them, but I really love hemp hearts. These are basically the seeds of the hemp plant, and they kind of look like this when they've been shelled. And you can buy them in bags that kind of look like this. And the nice thing about hemp hearts, this is they are so high in protein. Three tablespoons of hemp hearts actually has 10 grams of protein. And that they are super high in really good fats. And the best thing about this is that ratio of fats is a three to one ratio of omega three, uh, or sorry, of omega six to omega three fatty acids. We talked about this in the last video. That is the ideal ratio of omega six to omega three fatty acids for optimizing health. They're also very anti-inflammatory, and they are extremely high in fiber. And they have a mild, nutty flavor. It's kind of reminiscent of wild rice. I like to make it into like a, a rice pilaf, or I should say a hemp pilaf. It is delicious. And if, of course, if you want any of these recipes and things that I use, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to, to provide that to you. All right, moving on to substitutes for potatoes. The first one is jicama. Now, jicama is a low-calorie, high-fiber root vegetable that's high in vitamins and minerals, especially vitamin C. 
Now, I love to eat it raw. It makes amazing, uh, an amazing snack. It has a slightly sweet taste. It's kind of uh, a cross between a sweet onion and a pear. But if you slice it into matchsticks or make it into a mash and you bake it or roast it or air fry it first, it kind of reduces that slightly sweet taste just a little bit. It makes a fantastic hic uh, jicama fries are delicious. Now, another good one is rutabaga. Now, rutabaga is a cruciferous vegetable with significant benefits. It's very low in calories, very high in fiber. You're starting to see a, uh, a, a commonality here in all these benefits. Very high in vitamin C, potassium, magnesium, and calcium, as well as moderate amounts of other vitamins like B and E. And this isn't as much my favorite because it does have a little bit of a cabbagey Brussels sprout flavor to it, but when you cook it and roast it, it, it reduces that flavor. And it does make a very nice both French fry and uh, a, a mashed rutabaga. You mash it with some, some uh, garlic and some butter and oh, it tastes delicious. That's my favorite thing to make at Thanksgiving. Now, the, the last substitute for potatoes that I have is parsnip. And parsnip is a low-calorie, high-fiber root vegetable that's in the carrot family. Imagine that. It looks just like a white carrot. And it also is very high in vitamins E, K, C, and B, as well as all those important minerals like magnesium, phosphorus, and zinc. So if you got any questions, leave them below. And also, please leave me a review. Five stars are always appreciated. And go ahead and make me one of your favorites so that you don't miss any of my next videos. Now, coming soon, we are going to be talking about baking substitutions. You think you're never going to be able to have cookies again if you go on a low-carbohydrate, high-protein diet? Think again. I've got all kinds of amazing substitutions for baking in a low-carb diet. And uh, then after that, we're probably going to talk some about nutrients and things that are important to deal with when you have diabetes. Uh, and of course, I promised you my contact information. Total Health and Fitness is my company. And if you want to try a low carbohydrate, high protein diet, or if you just need some assistance figuring out what the best way of eating is for you, your lifestyle, your likes and dislikes, please contact me, jessica.tucker at totalhealthandfitness.co or www.totalhealthandfitness.co. And I would love to hear from you. And of course, the references and resources. I, I do research everything very thoroughly. And I appreciate you joining me, and I'll see you next week.